This is MSJ Chem. In this video I'll be looking at catalysts, how they affect the rate constant and their role in reaction mechanisms. So we'll start the video with a review of catalysts. Catalysts increase the rate of reaction by providing an alternative reaction pathway with a lower activation energy. Here we can see a potential energy diagram. In red we can see the activation energy for the uncatalyzed reaction pathway and in blue we have the activation energy for the catalyzed reaction pathway. As we can see the activation energy for the catalyzed pathway is lower than the activation energy for the uncatalyzed pathway. So next we look at the effect of a catalyst on the value of the rate constant K. In this slide we can see the Arrhenius equation for an uncatalyzed reaction and a catalyzed reaction. For the uncatalyzed reaction we're assuming an activation energy of 50,000 joules per mole. And for the catalyzed reaction we're assuming an activation energy of 25,000 joules per mole. Note that the temperature for the catalyzed and uncatalyzed reaction is the same. So this gives us 2.37 times 10 to the negative 9 for the uncatalyzed reaction and 4.87 times 10 to the negative 5 for the catalyzed reaction. So this demonstrates that at the same temperature the catalyzed reaction has a greater fraction of particles with energy equal to or greater than the activation energy. And in turn this leads to an increase in the value of the rate constant K. So to summarize the use of a catalyst increases the value of the rate constant K and a faster rate of reaction. So next we look at catalysts and reaction mechanisms. The first point is that catalysts appear in the rate determining step, which is the slower step in the mechanism. Catalysts are not consumed in a reaction, so they appear in the reactant side of the rate determining step and the product side of a later step. In other words, they are consumed in one step and regenerated in a later step. And finally, catalysts do not appear in the overall equation for the reaction, nor do intermediates. So next we look at some example reaction mechanisms. So here we have our first reaction mechanism. As we can see it's a two step mechanism with the first step being the slow step, which is the rate determining step. The first step involves the reaction between a chlorine radical and an ozone molecule. The products of the first step are the chlorine monoxide radical and a molecule of oxygen. In the second step an oxygen radical reacts with a chlorine monoxide radical to form a chlorine radical and a molecule of oxygen. So if we focus on the chlorine radical we can see that it appears in the reactant side of the slow step and it's regenerated in the product side of the next step. So from this we can deduce that the chlorine radical is acting as a catalyst. So from this we can deduce that the chlorine radical is acting as the catalyst in the reaction. This is because it appears in the reactant side of the rate determining step and is regenerated in the product side of the next step. So in this mechanism we have an intermediate which is the chlorine monoxide radical and we have the catalyst which is the chlorine radical. And here we have the overall equation for the reaction. Note that neither the catalyst nor the intermediate appear in the overall equation for the reaction. So if we cross out the catalyst and the intermediate from the reaction mechanism we should be left with the overall equation for the reaction. So next we look at our second example. Once again we have a two step mechanism with the first step being the slow step. In the reactant side of the first step we see the reaction between a molecule of hydrogen peroxide and an iodide ion. If we look at the product side of the second step we can see the regeneration of the iodide ion. Therefore we can deduce that the iodide ion is acting as the catalyst in the reaction. We can also identify the intermediate in the mechanism which is the hypoiodite ion. So, so far we've identified the intermediate and the catalyst. And here we have the overall equation for the reaction. Once again note that neither the intermediate nor the catalyst appear in the overall equation. In our final example we have a three step reaction mechanism. In the first step which is the rate determining step, methanol reacts with carbon monoxide to form methyl methanoate. In the second step, methyl methanoate reacts with ammonia to form methane amide and methanol. And in the final step, methane amide reacts with the hydronium ion to form methanoic acid 
and the ammonium ion. The intermediates in the mechanism are methylmethanoate and methanamide, and the catalyst is methanol. As we can see, methanol appears in the reactant side of the rate determining step, and is regenerated in the product side of the second step. And when we cancel out the intermediates and the catalyst, we are left with the overall equation for the reaction, which we can see here.